So our Wordle game is coming along quite nicely. In the last episode, we expanded our word entry system so that when we finish typing one word and hit the enter key, the program will slide down to the next level and allow you to start entering the second word. Now, of course, if you've played Wordle, you know that there's an important step that we've missed here. You can't jump to the next level until you're sure that the word that you've entered is an actual word in the English language. So today we're going to create a giant database of all the potential five letter words that you could be typing into Wordle. And then we're going to find a way to have Scratch have a look at that word that you typed and compare it to the list and see whether you're allowed to move on to the next level. So let's get right to that. <laughs> So we're back inside our Wordle development file. You can find the URL for that down below in the file description and load that up anytime you get stuck to see the progress that Mr. T has made so far on this project. So um, we're inside the letters sprite where most of the action is happening inside this program. After generating our game board, we get into this endless loop here where the computer is waiting for us to input a letter on the keyboard and then going through one at a time and changing the costumes of these tiles to reflect the letter that we typed on the keyboard just like that after hitting the enter key we've got our, our code waiting for that enter key press after that it switches to the next row which will allow us to start typing in the next row of type, just like that. But before we do, anyone who's familiar with the Wordle game, of course, will know that we can't just go jump into the next row because first we have to go through an evaluation process. We need to look at this first row and first of all, we need to figure out, have I typed an actual English language word? You can't just type random stuff inside here. Um, that's just not the way the game works. So um, after that, we're going to be looking at uh, the individual letters and how they match the particular word that we're working on. But that's a subject for another episode. So today we're going to look at how to figure out whether the word you typed is an actual word in the English language. To do that, we're going to need to assemble a database of five letter words. Now, I've done some searching around on the internet. There's probably a better way to do this, but I found a website here called bestwordlist.com. And from here, I found a list of 12,478 five-letter words, which sounds perfect to me. Um, so the process of getting this into your computer and into Scratch where it can be used is a little time consuming, but basically I just grabbed, now there's about 15 pages worth of text here. So it's a bit of an annoying process and you can avoid all of that just by grabbing my file and taking my existing list but for the sake of argument here I'm just going to explain to you the general process of what I did here so uh, I'm going to grab the first page of data here which is a list of several hundred words and then I'm going to paste it into a text editor now you can use whatever text editor you want I've just got WordPad here which is the default text editor inside Windows and I'm just gonna paste that into there. So it's a little time consuming, but we what we basically wanna do is go to the next page of several hundred words, copy that, and just keep doing that until we've finished the entire 15 pages of the list. So here. now I've got a gigantic list of uh, words here, and, and I need to figure out a way to get them into Scratch. Now to do that, we're going to have to create something called a comma separated values list. So spreadsheets, which is what we're going to use in a second to import this data, spreadsheets um, can take any kind of text file and bring it into their own software. But in order to do that, you need to tell it what kind of separator. So we've got a, a bunch of different pieces of data here, but how does it know when one piece of data starts and the other one ends? We need to add a separator here that, that will let our sp spreadsheet know what text we're entering here. So the commonly accepted separator that's used for most of these kind of generic files is a comma. And so because we've got our text set up here just in an endless list with spaces in between, all we have to do is go in and use the replace function inside 
our word processor, and you can do this in any word processor, really, um, and just search for all the spaces. I'm gonna go find what and type a space. I'm gonna replace it with a comma. Now this is gonna take a few seconds because there's a lot to do here. And when it's done, you'll see that my list has been modified so there's commas in between all the words here. All right, this is perfect. So now I want to export this file. Let's just do a little save as here. And I'm gonna save it just as a generic text file. Now our giant text list still isn't formatted properly to import into Scratch. To do that, we're gonna to have to open it up in a spreadsheet. Now you can use uh, Excel if you have access to that, but I'm just gonna use Google Sheets, which of course is free and available to everyone. So I'm inside a blank spreadsheet here. I'm just gonna go File, Import, and from there I'm gonna locate my text file. There's my five letter words.txt. I'm gonna bring it in. It's gonna offer me a couple of options and Excel will uh, probably give you some similar choices here. I just want to make sure that the separator type that determines uh, where one piece of data stops and another is set to comma. There we go. It's asking me whether I wanna convert the letters and text into a, um, into a formula. We don't wanna do that. We just wanna keep the raw text here. So I'm gonna uncheck that and I'm gonna select import data. All right, so um, we've imported our text. You can see every single one of these letters is going across in one gigantic row here. That is not gonna work. When we import this into Scratch, it's gonna look at, it's gonna ask us which column we wanna look at and it's gonna gather all the data from that column, so a, a vertical arrangement here. So in order to get this to work, we're gonna to have to convert this data from a horizontal format into a vertical format. And the way we're gonna do that is I'm just gonna click on the first row here to highlight it. That's gonna select all of my text. We'll just copy it. And now I need to open up a new sheet or uh, if I try to paste a column down here, it's actually gonna create a gigantic spreadsheet so that's several hundred or thousand rows across this way and several thousand rows deep. And that is gonna make your spreadsheet program freak out. So we, we wanna just start a new sheet here. I'm just gonna go add sheet at the bottom of the screen down here. And that will open up a new blank spreadsheet. I'm gonna position my cursor here in the top left row and right click and select paste special. So instead of just ordinarily pasting here, I'm gonna paste transposed. And what that means is it's gonna take this horizontal data and convert it into vertical data. Here we go. Now we've got all of our letters. I haven't done all of them here, but just for the sake of argument, you can see that I've got all my uh, letters here in one row, beautiful. Now I can export it in a format that Scratch will understand. We're back inside Scratch here, and now we can import this data into Scratch using a list variable. Now you guys will remember that a list variable is a special kind of variable that holds multiple pieces of information. Instead of just holding one long piece of information, like a typical variable, we can create a list of a whole bunch of items, item one, two, three, all the way up to 200,000. That's the maximum size of a scratch list. So instead of typing all this information in, which would take forever, we're gonna import it from our CSV file. Let's go ahead and make a new list. We're gonna click on under variables, make a list, and it's gonna ask us a name. So I'm gonna type five letter words here, beautiful. All right. So you can see when I click on the little checkbox beside my five letter words, I've got a blank list here. I could theoretically start typing words here by clicking on the plus sign and typing words up here. But instead I'm going to right click on my list and select the import option. That will pull up a file menu here where I can pull in my list of five letter words. Now, instead of grabbing the um, list that I just made that was only partial, I actually do have a complete list of five letter words here that I toiled on earlier. So let's bring that in. This is all 12,000 words. So when I select this, 
it drags them all in and you can see I have a list of length of 12,478 and then it has all the words in it, just all the five letter words in the English language or what I hope is all the five letter words in the English language here, 12,000 of them. So any teachers and parents who are gnashing their teeth right now, I have taken a preliminary look at this list and tried to scrub out some of the naughty words that I encountered. If you do find a naughty word in this list and you'd like me to remove it, please drop me an email at info at chromeworks.ca and I'll uh, happily fix this file up. Um, in the meantime here, so what are we going to do with this list here? We're back inside our letters here and this is the spot where we're adding our text input and we're just continuing that until the enter key is pressed. It's after that enter key is pressed that we need to start comparing what we've written to, a, to our list here and see if the letters that you've typed match up with any of these words here. To do that, we're gonna have to put the letters that we typed into a variable to make a word, basically. Right now, all that we're doing is um, is changing tiles and costumes here. None of this information is being saved. All we have is a bunch of tiles here that are wearing different co uh, costumes for the letters of the alphabet. So we've got to find a way to convert that into a variable depending on what we're line we're in here. So I've created a variable here called entered word and that's a global variable and we're going to be taking all our letters and filling them into that. The spot to enter it, of course, is right here after a repeat until loop has ended. That's where we need to evaluate it before we change to the next row and start looking at the next row and then our loop comes around again. So inside of there, I'm gonna pull these two blocks of code out for a little bit because we're just gonna get into our way and we're gonna be putting everything underneath here inside the forever loop, but underneath the rest of the code. So let's start by blanking out that variable. We'll set entered text, entered word, and we don't want it to be zero. We want it to actually be blank. So I'm going to click on the zero and just hit the backspace key to create a null variable, basically a variable that has no information in it at all. And um, that's important because we're gonna be building on that. We're gonna start with the empty and we'll start adding letters to it one at a time. So we're gonna be building this entered word variable up by adding one letter at a time to the variable based on the costume that these squares are wearing. So if I type words in here, for example, W-O-R-D-S, you'll remember that each of these squares has its own unique ID. So I need to take the, the, the value of square ID one, add it to the value of square ID two, three, four, and five. Now this changes depending on the row that we're in. When we're in the second row, we don't care about one through five anymore. We want to look at six through 10 here. So we're gonna to have to do some math to make sure that every time we're looking through this, we're looking at the letters based on the row number that we're in here. We're gonna use that variable i, which we use a lot in coding to keep track of which uh, square ID we're looking at at any, any given moment here. So we're gonna go ahead right underneath entered word here and set that variable i. And we're gonna to need to take the row number and do something with it. So we've got a row number of one here and we need to change that into one, two, three, four, and five. And then when we get to row two, we need to take that number two and convert it to, to the number six somehow using a mathematical formula. The trick we're gonna use is very similar to what we did in our last session here where we looked at the current row and did some math on it to uh, come up with the number that we wanted to. In this case, we're gonna take the current row and again, we're gonna multiply it by five. But we actually don't wanna be looking at the existing row because we if we're in row two, for example, and we multiply it by five, that'll give us 10. We actually, uh, to, if we're in the second row, we wanna look at the, at the row before we were at and then add one to that in order to get that number six here. So I'm gonna go current row minus one. So if we're on the second row here and we subtract one here, that gives us the number one, 
which we can multiply by five. And so that will give us a value of five. And then as we come around this loop here, the first thing we're gonna do is change our i by one. So that will give us a six that we're looking for, the square i d six for the second row. In the first row here, if we go one minus one is zero times five is zero, that will give us a zero. And when we add one to it by changing our i, then we'll end up with square i d1. So this formula will work quite nicely for our purposes here. We're gonna, so we'll set our i to current row minus one times five. Now we want to go through and look at, at, the, at the next five letters in a row, i and then i plus one and then i plus two, etc. So let's go grab a five times loop. We'll put it right underneath here. And inside there, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is change that i variable by one. So let's go to our variables and change i by one. So the next step is here is we have to start looking at the values of the individual squares here. So we need to, if we're looking at row two, for example, we need to look at what square ID six is at, about here. We cannot do that under the main part of the program here because anything that happens under the green flag will only look at the existing sprite and not at its clones. We don't really want to do a when I start as a clone here though, because we want to be able to control the timing of when this happens. So fortunately, when we do a broadcast in Scratch, if we broadcast a message under our events here, broadcast, I'm going to create a new broadcast here called append, which is just a fancy computer way of saying add onto an existing thing. So uh, when I broadcast a message and it's received, that received message here will affect clones as well as the main object. So that will let us look at individual clones here. So that's why we're gonna have to branch off into a separate area of the program. We can't use a custom block for that either because our custom blocks do not look at clones either for some strange reason. So the only way we can really do this is by using a broadcast and receive set of blocks here. So let's go broadcast that append message and inside of here we need to look inside of our clones and make sure that we're looking at the proper one. So let's grab an if statement here and we'll say if our square id is equal to i which is the number that we generated here, which would be six for the first letter in row two, for example, here. So let's go and grab a bubble here that says square ID. So if the square ID is equal to I, so if we're looking at square six, then we need to, to set that variable. Now we're not changing the variable here, we're actually setting it, and I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna use some text tricks to create this variable entered word here. So we're gonna set entered word to, and we're gonna use a join command here, which is going to take two pieces of text and join them together into a single piece of text. So we're gonna take the existing word here, which right now is blank, you'll remember, but Scratch is cool with that. If we try to join a blank to something else, it'll just um, it'll just add the second part and ignore the first. And then the next time we come around, there will be a single letter in here and that'll add the second letter to that. So what do we need on the right hand side here? Not banana, but we need the actual costume name of square six, if I'm looking at the second row or whatever that square is. You'll remember that our costumes are all named after the letter of the alphabet that they are. So if I'm if I'm wearing this costume in this sprite, that means that the name of that costume is gonna be B. And so I can use that information to build my variable here. So there is a block here under looks that's called costume number, and I can change that to costume name. So I'm gonna join my entered word with the costume name. Okay, back to our main script here. So we're coming around here, uh, we're pretending we're in the second row right now. So it's gonna look at the costume six, then it's gonna come around here, change that I by one, then it'll look at costume seven, add that to our costume name, and just keep going around and around with that. 
Okay, so we're ready to test this out now. We do have to restore these blocks that I pulled out a couple of minutes ago, and these will advance the row to the next row here and um, make it wait for the enter key. So let's go ahead and test that out. We'll click the green flag. And if this worked properly, when I entered a, a word here, that word should be transferred up into that entered word variable. Let's hit the enter key and bingo, we've got words up here. Now let's try the next row. Uh, I'll type the word shape here maybe. And we'll click enter. Beautiful. And so we're interpreting these costumes and turning them into a variable here. Now that we have a variable, we can start comparing that to our huge list of five letter words and see if, if it exists or not. Okay, so we're gonna wanna have a look at the word that we've just entered and make sure that it's a real word. And we're gonna want that to happen right here. We've just finished adding, gone, going around this loop here five times and adding all of those letters to our entered word variable. Now, before we change to the next row, right in the spot here is where we have to check word. I've gone ahead and created a custom block here called check word. There's nothing fancy about it. It has all the default options selected. Um, and I just typed check word in there. Okay, so in here, I'm gonna do an if else statement, which means that if it's a real word, I'm gonna do one set of things. And if it's uh, not a real word, we're gonna do something else. We're gonna do what's in the else here. So um, I'm not going to actually do the turning over the tiles and all the rest of that in this lesson. We're going to save that for the next lesson. So all we want to do right now is just play a sound, a one sound if it is a word and a different sound if it's not a word. And then we'll build from that in the next episode. So what are we checking for here? Our if statement, we need to look at our word, entered word. Let's go grab that variable and we need to compare it to the list called five letter words. So the block we're interested in here, there's a whole bunch of different blocks inside our list functions here that let you manipulate lists. The one I'm particularly interested in is this one here that says item number of thing in five letter words. If I click on this right now, it returns a big number, 10,896. And if we were to actually look at our word list here, you can see that, that item number 10,896 is the word thing, right? We right there under 10,896 is the word thing. So this block here is a very powerful function that can look through lists and find strings of text in there. So now if I take my entered word and add that and check that against my list of five letter words here. So right now, let's hide our list for a second here. So my entered word is shape right now. And if I click on this block, you can see it returns 9,480. Now the actual number that's generated here isn't really important here. All we wanna know is that it exists on this list here. What happens if I enter a nonsense word into this entered word? variable here. Let's try that out right now. So we'll go enter. We're going to set entered word to just a bunch of random letters, HFGDT. So now let's see if our entered words on the list. Let's see what, what comes up here. When I click on this, I get a zero. So if it's not on the list, we end up generating a zero here. So the answer here looks fairly simple at this point then. So if the item number of the entered word in the five letter list is greater than zero, then it's a real word. Let's plunk that in there. So if this is true, then it's a real word. And we're going to, let's just for now, um, just as I said, enter a sound effect file in here. I've got a few different sounds loaded up here. So let's go start sound, ship bell to indicate that we have a real word and we'll play an error sound like my favorite error sound buzz were if it's not a real word okay let's give that a try now and see if that works so click the green flag and i'm going to type words and then i'm going to click enter and if all went well i'll hear a bell here there we go. 
Okay, let's try that for the next one. So let's just type our, our nonsense let word here. Hopefully H-G-E-W-D good isn't a real word. Let's hit enter. And there we go, that worked. Let's try another word here. M-O-U-S-E, mouse. Click enter. And there we go, we get the bell. Beautiful. Okay, so this is working quite nicely now, and it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Most of the difficulty was just getting that data into the list, but checking the list turns out to be not too difficult at all. Now, while I was play testing this, I did encounter one little bug that's going to come back and bedevil us later. And that is, what happens if you enter text into here and that text is not a letter of the alphabet? For example, if I'm typing uh, the word mouse again, M, O, and my finger slips and instead of hitting a U, I hit the number right above it, which is seven. And then you see that it's entered a blank there, but it has actually jumped to the next letter. So when I type S, E here, now I've got a blank in my word, which is no good because when I enter, when I press the enter key, my entered word becomes M, O, default se why does it say default well because the very first square on the list here is my default square my blank square so it's taking the name of that and entry it into the list so to avoid this little glitch we're gonna have to go in and change our text input function just a little bit to make sure that we actually have uh, entered a letter of the alphabet rather than a number or any other character by accident so we can do that by going over to the custom block here called text input. I'm going to create a new variable here that's called letter successfully added. And I'll show you how that works in a second here. So we're detecting the letter here and um, our detect letter script is already checking to see if the letter that we entered is a letter of the English language. And then we change our current square to the next letter. So we want, what we want to do is make this change current square not advance if what we detected wasn't a letter of the alphabet, if it was a number, for example. So we're just going to nest this inside of an if statement here. And we're going to say if letter successfully added is equal to one. Then we're going to change that current square by one. And we're going to want to change that letter. We're going to set that letter successfully added back to zero again. And then right after that, we're gonna resume our program again. Now, that letter successfully added has to be flipped over to one for this to work. So we need to go over to the detect letter script. If the key we pressed is a letter of the alphabet, right in here is where we're gonna set that, um, that letter successfully added. Just anywhere in here to one. And so regardless of, of so if we typed an, an actual letter, this if statement will be triggered and we're gonna add the letter to it. And if not, that letter is not gonna advance. That current square is not gonna advance. So we're just gonna have to enter the next letter again. Let's test that out here and just make sure that it works. So now if I, if I type M O, seven and now if uh, if I realize my mistake and type the letter U you can see that it's still on the proper spot again and it hasn't entered a blank SE hit enter and there's our bell okay well we just averted a minor disaster there so that is it for this particular session next episode Instead of having sound effects play here, we're actually going to start looking at the word that we entered and seeing if any of the letters match the winning word in the puzzle. 
and we're gonna have to do something different depending on whether this if statement is true or not. So uh, I'll be back in a couple of days with the next chapter of Dev Diary. In the meantime, happy coding. This tutorial was produced by Chromeworks Technology. For more Scratch tips, tutorials, game reviews, and interviews, subscribe to this channel and make sure to tune in to our weekly live show, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern on YouTube.